In this lesson, we're going to talk about using PowerPoint to animate your story. Now, in the last lesson, we gave an overview of looking at PowerPoint and developing a script. In this lesson, we're going to take a deep dive into what I call the anatomy of a slide. Here's what we'll learn in this lesson. We'll look at what I call the anatomy of a slide. We'll find images and then we'll animate them. We'll also create text boxes and animate them as well. We'll use our script to prepare to record our slide and then we'll of course record it. And so, uh, before we create animation, we need to select the text and or pictures that we desire to use. First, we create an outline of what will later become a script for how our story will flow. Second, we'll obtain images, music, videos that we can put into the PowerPoint, or perhaps these are things that you've created on your own and have stored. Search on, on Google, select images, find and choose something that you like. We talked about this in our last lesson. Then you'll want to add text that will appear in the various slides. And finally, you'll want to record and animate them. And so, what we're going to do for this lesson to illustrate some of these concepts is to use a slide from my course, Clash of the Superpowers. My course is a comparative history curriculum that compares the clash of world superpowers in the year 600 BC between Babylon and Egypt to the clash of world superpowers in the 20th century between the United States and the Soviet Union. And so, one of the types of images that I needed was maps of the Middle East in both ancient and modern times. After searching for maps, I would then narrow the search for just uh, the images that I needed. And when I, I found uh, the image or images that I desired, I then selected and copied and pasted them into my PowerPoint document for further edits and modifications. Take a look at this slide. I've placed four, Im four images of maps on the left margin and have four bullet points that I want to bring up to describe each map. Now I want to animate the slide. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the animation tab and, and, and the animation pane. On, on the pane, notice the four lines of text that are highlighted with green stars in the boxes. Each box represents the words in the text bullet points in the PowerPoint slide. To make them appear, I will click them, and when I'm ready, you can click by hitting the space bar or the down arrow on your keyboard for, for clicking them. For example, when I click the first one labeled Ancient History, both the first bullet point and the map, that is picture 12, will appear. Take another look at this slide. Here I've slightly adjusted the image. On the animation pane, notice that picture 12 is designed to appear with the first text box when I click on it. When I click on the second text box for modern history, the red stars mean that you've set the timing for the image, that is picture 12, to disappear, and the next map, map that is picture 16, will appear. Each text box and image is sequenced to appear or disappear and go as fast, that is half a second, or as slow, up to five seconds, or delay for a few seconds or a few minutes, as I have pre-programmed them to do. If you want to see all of your choices for image entrance, that is green, exit, red, and special movements on the slide, yellow, simply click on the Add Animation Image. Notice that in the Slides uh, Notes field at the bottom of the slide, you can add notes to yourself and even type out the text of what you want to say when you record the slide later on. So let's talk about recording your slide. Before you record your voice, create text box that uh, you can uh, put them on the slide and then delete them later after you've done the recording. You want to highlight keywords to know when to advance the animation. And you can also leave text on the slide itself and then edit it out later on. Let me demonstrate. So first on the animation pane, click the Let's Demonstrate line of the text. Next, click Timing, and we can choose how the line of the text will appear, how fast, and if there will be any delays. Here, I've set it to appear when I click my mouse. 
I will also uh, have it appear in half a second, which is very fast. What if you want to create animation without recording your voice? Well, this is an important thing to do when you want to maybe add uh, music later on or upload it to YouTube and then select uh, royalty free, free music that you can associate with your video. If you are going to do the animal, animal Farm sort of video that I showed you earlier, now you just have to time the images in terms of when they appear and the transition between the slides. You can trigger the slides to advance uh, by using the transi Transitions tab. Also, you can allow time for someone to read the text boxes. That is, say, for example, 25 seconds. Now, you'll need uh, the, the text boxes for these, and you can create text boxes for your recording as well. But notice that you want to time these things out so that you know when the slide will advance and give people plenty of opportunity to read whatever you've posted on the slide. Now, let's create a text box for either situation. Click Insert and then Text Box and then drag it open on the slide and type the words that you want to type. For a dialog box like this one, click Shapes and then find Callouts and then find the text box. To change the color of the box, right click on the image and select Format Shape and select Solid Fill and the color that you would like to have. In this case, I've used a yellow uh, uh, text box fill because I have a black background. Now, just put your cursor on the image when you're done and start typing. You can change the text color. Here I've changed it from yellow to blue and then the, click the Home tab as needed to, to make changes in the text. Now you're ready to create a text box with the script of what you want to say when you record the slide. When you want to trigger an animation, picture, text, etc., I always use a different color. When I get to the colored text, I know to hit the spacebar, which then uh, causes the text animation piece to appear as I had planned it. The text box below is my script for this slide after reading the top line of the slide. And so, of course, the top line reads, there are four spheres of assessment used in this course. I've set the, the font size differently because when I go to record this, I'm only, only going to have spheres of assessment left in the actual video. And so, now let's see how I use the, the, the text box. So, I say ancient history, and I, and I hit the space bar, which brings up the, the text and the math and I go, can go ahead and say whatever I want to say. Not all of it has to be actually in the text box there on the slide. Modern history, particularly how the clash of modern day world superpowers in similar uh, ways uh, to the conf confrontations of ancient empires have occurred. I have that sort of thing here. I can then say a familiarization with the uh, geography of the ancient Middle East and talk about that as I might have already said. And then finally, I would say personal self-reflection on one's moral character and the development of leadership qualities. Now make sure that you fully stop speaking before advancing to the next slide while you're recording. Otherwise, the words will bleed over from one slide to the next. To record, click Slideshow and then click Record Slideshow. On the drop-down arrow, you'll be asked if you want to start at the beginning or the, or the current slide. For now, let's pretend that we are at the beginning. Let's pretend you've done all of this, and by the way, uh, that you want a, to have a nice microphone when you're recording. I use the Samson Meteor mic uh, that has a USB plug-in to my computer. Another choice is the Blue Snowball USB microphone, with, uh, which is textured in white. Now, let's view the completed slide. The assignments focus on four broad learning assessment spheres that are used in this, in this course. Ancient history, particularly related to the events, geography, and people of the exilic period when Judah was taken into Babylonian captivity. Modern history, particularly how the clash of modern-day world superpowers is similar in many ways to the confrontations of ancient empires. A familiarization with the geography of the ancient Middle East, which, combined with a greater knowledge of the history of the period, will enhance the student's understanding of the Old Testament 
And finally, personal self-reflection on one's moral character and the development of leadership qualities. You might be asking, what if I make a mistake while I'm recording? Well, if you make multiple slides, but then realize that you messed up, say, on slide number four, you can click on slide four to re-record it. You can then click current slide when it asks you where you want to start. If you click on the beginning, then it's going to basically copy over everything you've done before. Um, and so be sure that you click on current slide. Then you can hit the space bar to advance the slide. If you have, say, a fifth, sixth, etc. slides that follow after that fourth one, then to avoid recording over, say, the fifth slide, add a blank slide that says stop so that you can stop recording when you finish uh, slide number four. Let's see the next slide as an example. I always put a stop sign like this. Seeing this reminds me to end the recording so that I don't copy over any of the next slides that I have already recorded. And so another thing to remember is that you may have scrap slides. As you make your PowerPoint, don't discard extra stuff until you're all done. You never know when you might need it. Save it in a scrap slide, say two or three slides if necessary, to use as you build your PowerPoint. When you're all done, recording and everything else, save it as recorded. You should save periodically as you make it, by the way, uh, just in case the battery runs out or something else. The final recording should be a new one in the most recent version of PowerPoint that you're using. So at this point, I'd like to suggest that you stop uh, the video and uh, discuss what you've learned with other folks. What ideas do you have for creating edutainment videos? What questions do you have after watching this lesson? Discuss them with friends, family, or some sort of small group. And when you're done, proceed to the next lesson in which we'll look at how to save your PowerPoint presentation as a video.